From its headwaters at Lake Itasca, Minnesota, to its mouth in the Gulf of Mexico, the mighty Mississippi cuts a more than 2,300-mile course through the heartland of America, draining a 1.25 million square mile watershed that touches 31 states and two Canadian provinces, stretching from the state of New York to Montana. Through this vast system passes 41% of all the water in the United States. The Mississippi River watershed is divided into six distinct basins. The Upper Mississippi River Basin, the Missouri River Basin, the Ohio River Basin, the Arkansas White River Basin, the Red River Basin, and the Lower Mississippi River Basin, also known as the Mississippi River Alluvial Valley. On average, approximately 90% of the flow in the Lower Mississippi has entered by the time the river reaches its confluence with the Ohio. The Upper Mississippi above St. Louis contributes 19%. Another 11% is added by the Missouri River Next, the Ohio River contributes another 50%, and finally, 10% flows into the Ohio from Kentucky and Barkley Lakes, just 32 miles upstream of Ohio's confluence with the Mississippi. Flowing 954 miles from Cairo, Illinois to the Gulf of Mexico, the Lower Mississippi River serves as the spout of this vast system. Two centuries ago, the alluvial valley was mostly swampland, subject to constant flooding. The river was mostly unnavigable, except by small flat boats or canoes. Today, the alluvial valley is home to 4.5 million people, more than 22.5 million acres of prime farmland, more than 4,000 miles of highway, and 2,300 miles of rail, 500 manufacturing facilities, 100 power plants, dozens of ports, and one of the busiest commercial waterways in the world. All of this is made possible thanks to the flood protection provided by the Mississippi River and Tributaries Project, also known as the MR&T. The backbone of this system is 3,787 total miles of levee. Of this, 2,200 miles extend along the main stem Mississippi River. The system also includes various other features, such as floodways, headwater reservoirs, backwater areas, pumping plants, the old river control structure, dredging, and channel improvements. In 1955, the Mississippi River Commission undertook a comprehensive review of the mr &T, including a review of the project flood. The Weather Bureau, using the most advanced scientific and meteorological knowledge at the time, developed the project design storm series. Various combinations of historical storms and resultant floods, referred to as hypo floods, were analyzed. The study revealed that hypo flood 58A, which combined the floods of January 1937, February 1938, in January 1950, had the most probable chance of producing the greatest discharge on the Lower Mississippi River. Next, the Mississippi River Commission converted Hypo Flood 58A into the project design flood by routing it through the MRT system and producing a flow line to be used in determining MRT levee and structure elevations. This new project floods estimated peak discharge of 3 million cubic feet per second would be approximately 20 to 25 percent greater than the peak discharges of the 1927 flood. The first line of attack against floods is the MRT main stem levee system, which stretches more than 2,200 miles from Cape Girardeau to the Gulf of Mexico. These levees form the backbone of the MRT system and are designed to confine and convey a project flood design of up to 3 million cubic feet per second safely to the Gulf. Although not part of the MRT project, Kentucky and Barkley Lakes have a significant impact on the operation of the Birds Point 
New Madrid floodway. Releases from these reservoirs enter the Ohio River just over 30 miles or a one and a half day journey from the confluence area. Typically releases from these two Ohio River Basin reservoirs account for 10% of the total flow of the lower Mississippi. During large floods, the reservoirs provide critical storage that lowers flood stages on the Mississippi River and reduces the frequency of operating the floodway. As floodwaters from the Mississippi and Ohio converge, they approach the next line of defense, the Birds Point New Madrid floodway. Just downstream of the confluence of the Mississippi and Ohio rivers, the 133,000 acre floodway is bounded on the west by a 36 mile long setback levee and on the east side by a 56 mile long frontline levee which includes a fuse plug section, an inflow crevasse at the head of the floodway that can divert up to 550,000 cubic feet per second and lower flood stages up to five feet. Operation of the floodway occurs when the stage at Cairo reaches 60 feet and is forecasted to rise above 61 feet. By reducing pressure on the levee system, the floodway provides protection to more than 2.5 million acres. Since 1928, the Corps of Engineers has only operated the floodway twice, first in 1937 and again in 2011. Just below the Red River backwater is the old river control complex. For thousands of years, the Mississippi has meandered through the alluvial valley, shifting its course to the Gulf numerous times. The last shift occurred approximately 1,000 years ago when the Mississippi adopted its current path to the Gulf. By the 1940s, it became apparent that the Mississippi could shift its course once again this time down the Atchafalaya River via Old River. In 1950, the Mississippi Valley Division began an extensive study of the problem and recommended a control structure at Old River to prevent the Mississippi from changing its course and to maintain the same 70-30 flow and sediment distribution that existed between the rivers in 1950. Congress authorized the control structure in 1954 and construction was completed in 1963. The Old River Control Complex is designed to divert up to 620,000 cubic feet per second and consists of an overbank structure, low seal structure, auxiliary structure, and the Sydney A. Murray Hydro Power Plant. Another 30 miles downriver, we arrive at the next line of defense, the Merganza Floodway. Completed in 1954, Merganza Floodway includes a 3,900 foot long, 125 bay gated intake structure that can divert up to 600,000 cubic feet per second from the Mississippi River through the Atchafalaya Basin and then down to the Gulf. Combined with diversions from the Old River Control Complex and the Red River, Morganza Floodway can pass half of the 3 million cubic feet per second project design flood through the Atchafalaya Basin. The floodway has only been operated twice, once in 1973 and during the Great Flood of 2011. Operation of the floodway occurs when discharges below the floodway are forecasted to exceed 1.5 million cubic feet per second. As the project flood makes its way down river, discharges would continue to increase and more and more excess flow would be diverted through Morganza until flow reaches 600,000 cubic feet per second. Diverting this excess flow lowers flood stages and reduces pressure on the MRNT levee system downstream. The remaining 1.5 million cubic feet per second flow would continue its journey another 150 miles downriver before reaching the MRNT's final line of defense, the Bonnie Carey Spillway. Completed in 1932, the floodway is designed to prevent Mississippi flows from exceeding 1.25 million cubic feet per second. To accomplish this, 
The floodway can divert up to 250,000 cubic feet per second from the Mississippi River into Lake Pontchartrain. Operation occurs when discharges below the spillway are forecasted to exceed 1.25 million cubic feet per second. Timber needles are removed by cranes to allow floodwaters to be diverted through the floodgates and into Lake Pontchartrain lowering flood stages and reducing pressure on the levee system downstream to protect the city of New Orleans. The spillway is by far the most frequently used, having been operated 15 times in its history, most recently in 2020 and twice in 2019. Time and time again, the MRNT has proven itself to be one of the most successful civil works projects in our nation's history. The success of the MRNT is the result of two centuries of hard work, inspiration combined with perspiration, and has transformed the alluvial valley into the alluvial empire.